Hello, it's FA Cup weekend, so it's time for an FA Cup funnel forecast. Crossed by Heffernan, and was that a foul? That's a goal anyway from funnel, from funnel, from funnel. Yeah, that's right. It's an interesting weekend for AFC Bournemouth as we travel to Oldham, and I'm joined, as ever, by the one and only Tony Funnel. Tony, Happy New Year to you. Hi, Sam. Happy New Year, and Happy New Year to everyone else. A happy and a healthy one. How are you doing? It's a, it's another lockdown and uh, no more golf for you, eh? No, unfortunately not. No. Never mind. The sooner we get out of it, the better. It's a big shame. So Mr Tiggs is not here this week, so uh, I am standing in. So coming up on today's episode, uh, we're of course going to do the Super Six. Who is top of the table? Has Tony Funnel managed to penetrate that top 10? Because he's been trying. He would have needed a mega week for that. So we'll have to see where we're at. I wonder how I'm doing. I'll have to be scrolling down the table quite a bit to see my position. But also, we're going to do a couple of other things, including has the FA Cup lost its luster a little bit? Many people say it has. So I might be asking Tony of five ways of how we can improve the FA Cup. But first, Tony, I want to do something a bit different with you because you've collated five of your favourite FA Cup memories, haven't you? Yeah, well, firstly, before I give you my number five, my main memory of the FA Cup is, I don't know if it happened for you because you're a bit younger than me, or a lot younger than me, but the FA Cup was all about Saturday, the cup final day. You was in front of the TV all day long. When I was younger, there wasn't a lot of football on TV. So cup final Saturday was brilliant. You had like the interviews with the players. Um, I think you saw the teams having their breakfast. You saw the teams on the coach going to the match, going to Wembley. And uh, obviously you saw the match. And as soon as the match finished, the first thing you did was straight out on the field across the road. And you was all replaying the goals you'd seen. You know, that was the FA Cup for me. You know, mm. so many memories for so many people, I think the FA Cup can, can bring up. Mm. But going to my first one, my first, not my first memory, but um, one of the first ever ones was Ronnie Radford mm. scoring against Newcastle. Bear in mind, um, Radford was playing for Hereford at the time. Hereford were in the Southern League playing against a top team like Newcastle. You can see there, well, you don't you don't quite actually see there, but the pitch was a mud pile. <laughs> there was mud all the way through the middle of the pitch. And you had like 10 yards either side. It was a bit of green. Through the middle was mud. And like Radford's got the ball about 40, 50 yards out. And he's played the ball 10, 15 yards ahead of him got the return pass, he's run, he's passed and he's ran through all this thick mud and yeah. then he's hit a scorcher of a shot. That's in at number five, is it? Yeah, that's number five. Um, number four, I've got to put in um, Dorchester. Dorchester Ooh. Town versus AFC Bournemouth. Right. Um, we're going back to 1981, probably about two and a half to three months after I got to the club. And it was a, a December picture, uh, fixture. We've had some snow. And uh, that's that's the second game at Dean Court. But we played at Dorchester first. Yeah. Um, played at Dorchester. I remember the game well. Um, they went 1-0 up. Uh, I was fortunate enough to equalise for Bournemouth. And the first thing I did, as usual, went straight to the crowd like that, hands in the air. But it's, it's only a non-league ground. The barriers had come down. All the Bournemouth fans had come onto the pitch. No way. The next minute, honest to God, you've had Dave <laughs> Webb come onto the pitch with the police to help get the fans back off the pitch and behind the goal again. Yeah. Wow. All my fault. <laughs> so at that stage, what's here? were Dorchester Town in? How many tiers were there between the two sides? Yeah, Bournemouth, Bournemouth were in the uh, we were in the fourth division at the time. Mm. Uh, they would have been in the southern. Yeah, two or three tiers, there'd have been difference. But the, the why I, I picked this one, why it was so good, 
is because obviously Dorchester Town, local non-league club, mm. we're the closest professional club to them. We've gone to Dorchester Town. They played really well. Uh, they got a great result. They've got a draw. So we go to Dean Court on the Tuesday night. And uh, I never forget the Tuesday night game because um, Keith Williams always reminds me every time I see him because mm. Keith Williams got the winner. I set him up, or should I say set him up, I passed the ball to him, and he had a scorcher yeah. right in the top corner of the net. And every time I see him, it reminds me about it. So I'll never forget that goal. And he wasn't so, particularly known for his goals, was he, Keith Williams? No. No, but I think I think he'd done a mixture in that game because I think if you read that um, report there, especially it was the first game, it was a, a bit of a battle at Dorchester. Yeah. And Keith was in the middle of the battle, mm. making tackles everywhere. Um, I think he probably kept us in the game that day. So, uh, yeah, Keith, in the first game, he did the hard work and in the second game he got the glory which he deserves so brilliant and, brilliant. and, and that's it was all what the FA Cup's about because say Dorchester we've gone to sort of the local non-league club um, we managed to get a draw they yeah. managed to get the replay they wanted gone to Dean Court great for their players their non-league players and they're going to play at um, Dean Court and lucky enough for us, we got the right result of D Court, went into the next round. But um, yeah, that's what uh, the FA Cup's all about. Mm, it certainly is. So that's your number four. Let's now go for your top three. We're in your top three now. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, top, top three. Um, I'm going to put Eric Cantona. Ooh. His goal against. Liverpool in the 1996 FA Cup. It wasn't a, it wasn't a great game, but what happened was that season or the season before, Eric did his famous kung fu kick of at course, Crystal Palace yeah. in the crowd, and he was um, he was banned from football for eight months. So after eight months, he comes back in the October, starts playing for United again, helps them towards winning the Premier League again. And then he's at the FA Cup final. And in a bit of a scrappy game, yeah, it was. he gets the winner. And was that the one where Liverpool turned up in white suits before the game? They I were think all... it, it might have been. I, I think <laughs> most of us were reminded about that, aren't we? <laughs> well, Liverpool yeah. anyway. And I tell you what, check out that screenshot because that looks like a young Gary Neville there standing behind the goal. Obviously, as uh, one Actually, of the younger yeah. players. Yeah, that. that's right. Yeah, and you know, there's him doing his punditry now. But um, yeah, I remember that the goal came very late in the game as well, didn't it? And uh, it pretty, it pretty much sealed it as soon as it hit the back of the net. But yeah, I. I remembered it well as a as a youngster. I had a soft spot for Liverpool, so um, I would have been, you know, fairly gutted. But oh, uh, yeah, what a what a turnaround it was for Eric, especially after that previous twelve months he had. And uh, love that memory, love that memory, Tony. So what we're going to do is go to your top two now. So what is in in position number two? Bobby Stokes Ooh. goal against Man United in the 1976 FA Cup final. 1976. Wow. Yeah. Now, why I picked this, uh, firstly, because Southampton had gone there as a team that supposedly had no chance against Manchester United. Yeah. Again, this is, what, this is what the FA Cup's all about, you know, the underdogs and that at times. Uh, but they, they, they'd gone... And everyone expected Manchester United to turn Southampton over. Mm. But um, what was funny, like Menemy bought his team of a lot of old heads yeah. and a lot of young lads with some young legs on them as well. And uh, on the day, they battled and battled and held on to their 1-0 lead and um, deservedly won the FA Cup. But why I also picked this... Because the funny thing is, 
as you and Tony know, I do follow United. I have done since the days of uh, Bess, Law and Charlton. But what was, what's funny about this is that I'm watching that game and going, oh, Bobby Stokes, oh, why did he score? <laughs> the next season, I'm in the same dressing room as Bobby Stokes and those Southampton Wembley winners because I signed my first contract, professional contract with Southampton. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. yeah. So that was interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, Tony Funnel's got a lot of footballing memories, but as a Man United fan, is his number one thought anything to do with United? Maybe not. Well, let's find out. So then, Tony, what is top of the charts for your number one FA Cup memory? Yeah, the number one isn't actually a final. Oh, okay. It's a semi-final. It's a 1999 semi-final. Ryan Giggs' goal against Arsenal. Oh, and what a goal it was. Yeah, well, at the time, it was the semi-final. Man United and Arsenal were the top two clubs in England at the time. Mm. And uh, the game was poised at 1-1. I think both teams had uh, – because um, I did check up on this today, so I, I'm yeah. saying I think. I, I do know, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> both teams did have goals disallowed as well. So it's one all. We're going into the, the final part of the game and Arsenal get a penalty in the 90th minute. And I remember – I'm watching this game. I remember the t- watching it. They I get forgot about that. Yeah, they get a penalty in the 90th minute. Yeah, they did. Burkamp had missed three of his last five penalties. Mm. He's up against Michael. If he hits it to his left, if Burkamp's left, he hits it to his yeah, left, yeah. he goes in the goal, he's gone to the right, Michael saved it, and they're still in the FA Cup and going into extra time. Wow. And what I yeah, also found right. out today, that Michael used to, he'd say, when he got... It was a penalty. He dived to his right. Hmm. And then the next time it was a penalty, he dives to his left. Oh, right. Pro- so like he always, always knew in his mind, he was focused. He knew what was, he was going to do. It wasn't, hmm. oh, what should I do? What else is the player going to run up? Shall I go left or right? No, I went left last time. This time I'm going right. And lucky enough, he dived to his left, saved wow. it. Game went into extra time. And then I just remember gigs. Well, I mean, you never thought he'd score at the time, but he picked up that ball inside his own half and then he must have gone past at least four or five. Yeah. You know, half the defence of Arsenal straight through, but then he had to finish it off at the end. Yeah, and you know what? He he was running at such a pace and sometimes you you see it where players will go around the outside of players, but he cut through the middle of so many right of them. through the middle of their defence. <laughs> and then when he bared down on you know, David Seaman in goal, he was a you know such an angle. And there was there was probably only one place in the net that he could have actually done it. But and to Seaman generate that power, a big guy. Yeah. And to generate that power that he did and put it into the roof of the net, have, having run all that, he played the whole game as well, hadn't he? And then he had time to rip his shirt off afterwards, if you remember. <laughs> <laughs> and run the length of the pitch. What yeah. an FA Cup memory that was. And at that time as well, the rivalry between Arsene Wenger and Sir Alex Ferguson was, you know, that was really rife as well because Arsenal oh. um, were, uh, you know, a real prospect at that point in time. Obviously not so much these days, but yeah, two of the top teams, as you say. And I think it was a Villa Park, wasn't it? And... I'll tell you what, we'll we'll talk about the five things that, I mean, whether the FA Cup can be rescued or not, I don't know. So we'll just quickly talk about that before we do the Super Six. And one of the things that I want to say is, don't you like it when the FA Cup semi-finals are at different venues and not at Wembley? Yes. Because it yeah, takes the shine that. away from it. Because yeah. a lot of the teams who win their quarterfinals are almost celebrating like they've won the cup because they've got to Wembley. Oh, but yeah. that's not, and it, I don't know, it just takes that special day away knowing that, they're going to get to Wembley anyway, even if they're yeah. in the last four. It just doesn't. Wembley should be just for the final. Yeah. I think most people agree with that. Yeah. And, you know, there's another thing that I would say as well that the 
you know the time of the final as well it used to be three o'clock that's the time what it used to be and then it got moved forward for prime time tv it's gone i think 5 15 we've had a 5 30 and i don't know yeah. to me it should always be saturday three o'clock i think right. they, they thought that there was more viewers that would watch but for me that you know that's when it always should be yeah definitely but we'll go through five things that you can think of off the top and we'll do this one to five rather than five to one so let's go for uh, thing number one um what do you think can be done first and foremost to improve the fa cup uh, tony i think at this moment in time if there was a a champions league spot for winning the fa cup yeah uh, it would make the fa cup more important yeah um yeah but at the same time, it's hard to see that coming because there's so much money in the Premier League. The Premier League is not going to give up a Champions League spot no, you're to right. help the FA Cup. I'm certainly on board with that. So then what about uh, your second thing to improve the FA Cup, Tony? Um, money. More money. In improve the incentive for teams to get further in the competition. Mm. Um, I mean, it's mad again, when you look at it. One, you know, one, you know, just under two million for the winners, and you know, for staying in the Premier League, finishing seventeenth, you get like ninety million pounds or whatever it is. It's just, you know, it's they don't absolutely bizarre. Sell, do they? No, no. So you know, of course, these are pie in the sky ideas because you know it can't. It can't always work out like that. Um, what about your um, your third reason? Um, your third reason, then, Tony. How could it be improved? Well, a, a lot of the times at the moment, you've got uh, Premier League sides like they've just had a big Christmas and New Year period, mm. straight into the FA Cup, and then on Tuesday night, Premier League games start again. Yeah. So it's you know, pretty obvious that so they are going to rest players mm. and rotate players. Uh, the, the other option is to help them do that is to seed teams uh, yeah. in order that they, um, they've got more of a chance to get into the final. But would, would the country want that? I certainly wouldn't. It, that would spoil the magic of the FA Cup. It's yeah, great when a non-league side plays a league side. Well, when you get further down, you've got a chance of a Premier League team and you're a smaller club. It would take all that magic away. It would. And it, it would It would be sort of almost more like a food chain then in that you would have the lower league clubs and, yeah, they may draw someone from from League Two or whatever, but invariably the League Two side will win it. And then it's like the League Two side will face a championship side. And then, yeah, you know, that's one way to do it, but it would spoil the magic of the FA Cup. Yeah. And, you know, for those teams to get through to the third round, I mean, you know, what uh, there was one this time round that was just like the best draw possible for a, for a particular side. I can't remember what it, um, who it was for, but it was just such a magical draw. Um, but, yeah, that's a great reason. Uh, we'll go on to reason number four now. How could it be improved? Yeah, it, it's, another, it's another one for um, helping reduce the amount of um, games that the Premier League teams play. Uh, and it's putting the Premier League clubs in later in the competition. Yeah. But, I mean, I personally still don't like that idea either. Now, I'm actually showing last year's one because I still can't get over the fact that we're not in the Premier League anymore. So I'm still going to show the ball with Crest in the Premier League. But yeah, you know, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, that is one you know, way they could you do it. And they might treat those few matches they get uh, in the FA Cup with more respect because sometimes you you almost feel like it's just a bit of an inconvenience to them, isn't it? Yeah, the, the difficult thing is, like, we're talking now to stop teams going in the early stages but when you put them in in the later stages, you've then got the Premier League and the top clubs are playing European games. Yeah. So the, the biggest problem that we've got is that our, t our teams play far too many games. Yeah. Mm. I, I mean, I bet that 
you know, like even like when you were playing for, you know, Southampton, obviously, you know, like a relatively big side, you know, there, there must have been a turning point where, you know, because I'm sure that when you saw the FA Cup, you thought, wow, you know, we're playing an FA Cup match this weekend or whatever, you know, whether it's for Bournemouth, for Gillingham, for Brentford, whoever. And that magic of the FA Cup um, has always been there. But towards the sort of mid to late 90s, it just, I don't know, it just, you know, seemed to dissipate. And now there, there's a chance that Bournemouth, for instance, this Saturday against Oldham will be, pre- will be putting out a lot of their youth team. So maybe Oldham will be looking at Bournemouth previously and thinking, oh my goodness, we can see the likes of, you know, Jefferson Lerma. We can see um, players like, you know, Asmir Begovic and, you know, Dan Juma if he's back fit, David Brooks, all the top stars. And now they're thinking, well, actually, we're just probably going to see their youth side. So it doesn't, I mean, it's not good for anyone, um, but you can see the reason why they do it. That's it. It's, it's, first of all, it isn't very good, but you can understand it. Mm. Like, Bournemouth's main priority now isn't to, um, to get into the next round or the round after that of the FA Cup is to get up to the big boys league, the Premier League. Mm. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's, that's my point. It's not just the, um, the Premier League teams that are resting uh, players and rotating. It's the championship teams as yeah. well. Oh yeah. And it goes down, it, it goes down and, and it'll only get like that more and more, I think, but yeah. But I also can remember years ago, yeah. you saying about the FA Cup, we did used to look forward to the FA Cup. We'd even be looking um, who we got in the next round of the FA Cup. I can't see the players now looking to see who's in the FA Cup. No. And who they might be playing. They wouldn't no. be interested. It was a huge It was a huge event. And I completely agree with that. So we'll finish off then with uh, reason number five then, Tony. What, what else can be done? Yeah, again, it's only uh, to try to reduce um, the amount of games is uh, no replays. Ooh, controversial. Controversial. That's very, because um, that's what we look for. That's what these lower teams, a big cup replay for them is, is brilliant. It brings more, more revenue. Exactly. And if, if there's a if team that manages to hold, cup again. If they ma- if a team like manages to hold Newcastle United at home, a little side like you know Hayes or you know Barrow or whatever, going to St James's Park, huge for them. It's a financial yeah. incentive. Uh, you know, do you think maybe that the you know the lower ranked team should maybe get the choice of where the match is played in the first place now, to avoid that kind of issue? That's a very good idea mm. because <laughs> you you choose to play at St James's Park straight away. Wouldn't you? Well, well, you know, like as a player, you play at your non-league ground that holds a thousand every, you know, every week. You want to look forward to a trip to the big boys. Why not? Yeah, of course, it gives the bigger team a favour, but financially, yeah. that's where the lower teams will benefit. And as a player, it could be your one and only chance, once in a lifetime, playing at a Ooh. Premier League ground. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's a good point. No, that's good. Yeah. Anyway, tomorrow here on Back of the Net, we're going to be doing a watch along uh, where you can uh, come along and watch myself and Tom Jordan watching the game. We're going to be doing a couple of giveaways during it and also chatting all things cherries. But if you want to watch it, it's on BT Sport Extra 6 because they're going to be having a lot of FA Cup coverage throughout the weekend, as are the BBC. And the Super 6 this weekend is full of FA Cup matches now. Tony Funnel, should we see how he did last week? Uh, this was what he did last week. So, Crystal Palace 2, Sheffield United 0. You got it on the money. Norwich 1, Barnsley 0. You got it on the money. Birmingham 0, Blackburn 2, bang on the money. Swansea 1, Watford 0. It was actually 2-1, so you got a couple of points as it was the Brentford versus Bristol, the Bristol City match was postponed and uh, you just got the score between Preston and Nottingham Forest the, the wrong way around there. You said 1-0. Tony, you got 17 points! I know. I had a great week. I love that. And I, I was a little bit lucky because the uh, the Blackburn game, I yeah. had one, I, I'd counted up my scores, how I was doing. I thought, oh, not too bad, not too bad. And then I got a shock. I thought, hang on a minute. Blackburn had scored in the 90th minute, made it two. 
<laughs> yeah, so I mean that that have as I said to you before, you need those really good weeks, a few five pointers. Yeah, and it does it shoots you I, up the league. I would love one of them because I I'm, I've missed a couple of weeks recently just because I forgot, and yeah, I I'm hoping to get some kind of credibility. So what that does, Tony, is put you in eighth position there. That is the latest league table. There you can see Tony Funnel in eighth position. Alan Rocket is still top. He uh, has got, let's just zoom out a little so we can see it all, 213 points. But Tony, you are less than 10 points behind him now. You are on 204 points. That is really very good. You have made the top 10 and you're you're joined there by, by Zach, who's been up there before, Lewis Curtis, Jamie Dawson, Colin Stevenson is there well as well. It's you know the only way is up for you by the looks of it. I hope so. I mean, it'd be difficult this week because um, we've got um, the FA Cup. We don't know what teams are going to go out. Mm. So this week, you know, if you do well, you either know a hell of a lot or you've been really lucky. <laughs> It's a, you know what, it's a really tough one because you can look at, I mean, for instance, the first fixture here, Stoke v Leicester, you can look at them and think, well, you know, Leicester are probably a better side, but you just don't know what team they're going to put out. So um, it is a bit of a lottery and, you know, credit to anyone. If they manage to get maybe over 15 points this week, that would be unbelievable because these ones are hard to predict. But I'm going to have to ask you, Tony, what are you going for? Stoke versus Leicester? I'm going for Stoke 1, Leicester 2. He always has to go for a 2-1, doesn't he? But I, uh, I broadly agree with that. Now, Burnley are at home to uh, MK Dons. Yeah. Um, I'm going for Burnley 2, MK Dons nil. Okay. Now, Andrew Sermon, of course, is at MK Dons. So, um, hopefully, he has a good performance there. But, you know, we always struggle. You know, Bournemouth always seem to struggle at Burnley. Uh, another fixture, Bristol Rovers versus Sheffield United. Sheffield United, I mean, the, well, the FA Cup might be their competition where they can have a little bit of a little bit of success this season because their league form's not been great. But what are you thinking for this one? Yeah, I am going for Sheffield United. I'm going for a 1-0 win, Sheffield. 1-0 win. West Brom, they're at Blackpool. Yeah, I'm going for West Brom 1-0. West Brom 1-0. Again, West Brom not exactly having the best of seasons so far. AFC Bournemouth, though, they travel to Oldham Athletic. Yeah, uh, a win for Bournemouth. So, 1-0 Bournemouth. 1-0. Like it. I think I've got a feeling we'll probably put out a load of youth players. And Exeter... St. James's Park, not the uh, St. James's Park that I mentioned earlier, but they are home to Sheffield Wednesday, who uh, recently climbed out of the relegation spots in the Championship. Yeah, I'm going for Exeter 1, Sheffield Wednesday 2. There you go then. So those are Tony's predictions there. We'll, we'll, do, we'll put a golden, a golden goal on as well, Tony. Yeah, we'll go for the six minute. Six minutes and uh, we'll challenge Jeff as well. And the entry has now been submitted. So there we go. That is all in the bank, Tony. Your predictions are done. And you never know, it could be the week where you went to the top five, maybe. Who knows? <laughs> we were thinking, we were thinking at the start of this, we, we thought, what about we do it whereby anyone that finishes above Tony can win a prize? And at the start, I thought, well, if Tony does badly, we could be spending a lot of money. But now we're thinking, oh, maybe that should have been done. But anyway, um, brilliant predictions. Tiggs will be back next time for a catch up to see how you've done. Looking forward to that. And hopefully, uh, you know, the magic of the FA Cup, it'd be nice to see a few shocks this weekend, wouldn't it? Yeah, I honestly, I don't want the FA Cup to change. I want all these magical stories to continue. You know, that's what the FA Cup's about. Yeah, we want replays. We want the top clubs in as early as possible. Yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Tony, thanks very much for coming on today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And remember to join us for the FA Cup Watch Along. That's going to be uh, on Saturday at three o'clock with myself and Tom. There's going to be a giveaway from the Graphic Bomb as well, an FA Cup print. Uh, but until then, cut the cherries and we'll see you next time.